Hello everyone, it's Dave from Radio Station Solutions with another product demonstration video for you. This time I'm going to show you how you can integrate Playout One with the VB Audio Banana Mixer. If you've not seen the VB Audio Banana Mixer, then you can find it by going to vb-audio.com, click on the Banana tab, and then what you have is the ability to install a virtual mixer that allows you to bring in inputs and send many different mixes to as many different outputs as you want really. Uh, the only thing is that we do absolutely stress you must donate to the guys if you are going to use it. What they've created is absolutely incredible. So make sure you donate and donate well because it's such a great product. Now when you download the VB Audio Banana Mixer, it does install and it's going to create a few different devices in your Windows uh, sound and recording uh, control panel. What I would certainly make sure, and this is what I found when testing it with Playout One, is that you make sure any audio device that you're going to be using with the VB Audio Mixer, uh, you make sure that the sample rate is all set to the same. So if you want to use 4800 as I'm using, then make sure everything is set to 4800. If you're going to use 4100, make sure everything's going to use 4100. And also a big thing that I found you need to certainly tick is any audio devices, make sure that they're not in this exclusive mode here. I found if you have that ticked on certain devices, it can cause a few little problems when setting things up. So make sure that you've got everything on the same sample rate and also make sure nothing that you're using with the VB Audio Mixer is going to be in exclusive mode. So make sure that box is unticked. Now, when it's installed, you're thinking, where's it gone? There's no desktop shortcut, but if you simply type in banana, <laughs> there we go. And once we click it, what I tend to do then is pin it to the task bar. And straight away, I go into the menu here and I make sure that it is going to run at startup in the system tray. Otherwise, you won't get any sound out of anything if it's not running. Next thing to do is set your A1 device. The A1 device basically is the master audio device and then everything else sort of works around that. If you haven't got a physical output, then you may struggle to get a consistent sound from this. So I would always recommend use a physical output so I'm going to use my speakers and then once you've selected your A1 sound device you can then start to mess around with the banana mixer now what we have here are two virtual inputs and we can see those in our playback devices here we are orgs input and uh, voice meter input and I'm going to use those in playout one so I'm going to use the orgs so if I right click here I can type play out one there we go and I'm going to make these go off to uh, the B2 routing and I'll explain the B2 routing in just a second first of all though I need to go into play out one and we need to make sure that we assign in our hardware the orgs input which we've done here so as you can see orgs input orgs input stream player needs to be orgs input and my monitor is just going to be my speakers because i want to be able to cue things up listen to the sega editor maybe do a bit of voice tracking but i don't want that going to my stream or to my processor or fm chain whatever you're using it for so i'm going to save that now if i just quickly drag in uh, this song into deck one and now play it what you can see is we, we've got some signal coming down through the Playout 1 channel and it's being routed to the B2 fader, which is over here. And if we go to recording devices, we can see that we have here our output from Playout 1. There it is. Uh, and that's going to the org's output. So we can then set that on our encoder or anything else and that will then be picked up. Also, anything else we route to the B2. So for example, this little tape deck here. So let's route that to B2 and let's just pause play out one for a second. So this little tape deck here, I'm going to select a uh, song from my play out one library and it begins playing. And now that is being routed to B2. So for example, if I wanted to take down my play out system, play out one and upgrade it, I could play a tape or gosh, tape. 
going back, aren't we? I'll play an MP3 or a M4A uh, through the tape deck, and that will allow me then to stay on air whilst upgrading player one. So just, again, a nice little neat feature for you to be able to uh, use when upgrading or doing a little bit of maintenance. So what else can we do within Playout 1? Well, we've inbuilt into the new version of Playout 1 a new command called VBAN. And if we go to the predefined commands window, as you can see here, we've now got a new command called VBAN. So first command I'm going to show you is how to turn on and off a channel in VBAN. Okay, so uh, we can mute and unmute the channel through Playout 1, which may be useful, for example, if you are going to take a remote outside broadcast feed from Skype or IPDTL or Source Connect Now or any other thing you could have for example Skype on this channel here so let's type in Skype and so in Playout 1 what we want to do is we want to turn this channel on and off at a predefined time so how do we do that well if we go to the manual of the V Banana Mixer you'll see loads of commands as you scroll through the manual on what you can make the VBAN uh, remote mixer do simply by firing a command at it from Playout 1. So what we want to do is we want to turn on the mute or turn off the mute. So we're going to grab this command here and we'll go to Playout 1 and paste it in here. Now we need to replace this little I in the square brackets with the channel number. Now this is quite important. Logically, you would say, okay, I want to turn on Skype. That is channel number one, two, three, four. No, it's not. The V Banana Mixer is zero based. So basically, it starts zero, one, two, three. So it's going to be channel three. So we type channel three in there. And we do a little equal sign. And we want to, first of all, mute the channel. So let's set it to one. And then we can give it a friendly name. So let's say Skype unmute. Oh, sorry. No, mute. There we go. And so what we can now do is we can insert our command. Skype mute. There we go. Better unmute it first. And I'll move this to the side and we can get rid of that for now. Um, what you're going to see now is I'm going to hit play. It's now gone into the command processor, so when I hit play again, muted. There we go, channel muted. And we can do the same with an unmute. So, for example, we can simply for the process of this, change that to mute equals zero. And let's now unmute. So let's insert our command again. And we hit play. It's gone into the command processor. When I hit play again, unmuted. So you can see straight away, you can really start creating some really neat little functions here to turn on channels. You can also do, which is one of my favorite party pieces, what we call the fade on a channel. So if the outside broadcast is coming to an end, rather than just chopping it off, you can actually fade out the channel, which is pretty cool. So if we find the fade to command, here it is. And let's go back to play out one. And this time we are going to change this and let's just put in that command there. Now the fade to command requires two parameters and those two parameters are the volume you want to fade to. So let's go for minus 60 and then the amount of time in milliseconds, how long you want it to take. So let's go for five seconds. That's going to be 5,000 and we'll just change our friendly name to Skype fade out. So now if I insert our command, Skype fade out, didn't insert. And let's bring up the banana mixer again. I have different names for this mixer. I call it the V-Band, the V-Banana, the VB audio mixer. So I do apologize for mixing up my uh, names for this. Okay, so we put it into the command processor. Now what we should see is the Skype channel fade when I hit play. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, hardware input one uh, moving down there. So that is because I didn't set the channel number to remember. It's zero base, so it's going to be zero, one, two, three. How to be caught out on a video. 
Okay, so let's try that again. Put it into the command processor. This time, there we go. So I would always recommend testing your commands first before you use them, uh, as you could get caught out like that. I could edit it out, but I'll leave it in. Okay, now I want to uh, re-bring, well, re-bring in. What sort of words are that? I want to fade in the Skype channel now, so I'm simply going to change that to zero. And let's have Skype fade in. And let's insert that command again. Okay, one, two, three, here we go. Yes, it works. So there we go. Now, I haven't actually routed the Skype channel to the B2 encoder. So I could click it, or for example, we could actually, again, go and make that also assigned through playout one. So if we grab, for example, strip uh, B2, and again, we just go into the playout one command processor. I'll add this as a new one. So let's go to VBAN. Strip again, it's going to be number three. And I think it's equals one to turn it on. Yep, one for on. And this time it's going to be Skype to B2 bus. So this is going to be quite useful, for example, if you need to send different feeds to different places at certain times of the day for a network feed or for something else. So let's now insert the command for Skype to B2 bus. And let's just deselect it. And then we should, when we hit play, there we go. So that's now routed the Skype fader to the B2 bus, which is then being routed to my encoder or my processor or my FM chain, etc., etc. So that's how you use the V Banana Mixer, and that's how you integrate it with Playout One. If you've got any questions, then feel free to post them on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash playout one, and I'll see you for another video sometime very soon.